the big stick is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a big stick, okay? Um, looks like a table leg, but it's got, if you notice a little closer, it's, it's got some roundness to it, right? There's a little concave here. Um, this one's a little small. You see how my hand goes mostly around it. You'd actually want it a little bit bigger so you feel a little awkward in your grip. You don't want to be able to grab it, grab it like this. It should be roughly the size of, of somebody's forearm or wrist, kind of this area, right? And what we say is the big stick teaches hung, hung jin or hung jie, right? Hung it, it, in Chinese just means horizontal, but in a martial application, hung is a sort of a lateral movement that comes across the horizontal plane like this, okay? You can see it kind of comes across and back a little bit, right? So you're working on this, um, this hung gene, and I'll show with, my, uh, with Trevor here in a second, but I'll, I'll demonstrate the, the, the movement. Now, just like with the belt, there are, I mean, like, I mean, you, you can just make stuff up what you're gonna do with this, to be honest, right? You just pick any technique, right? Any technique you want and you can do it. But there are a few exercises that are specifically geared towards teaching this um, energy. So one we just call it, it's called uh, Jian Shang Hung, which means over the shoulder hung, okay? So I just get to this position and I'll just kind of demonstrate, I won't go into too much detail here, and that, okay? If you watch from straight on, okay, you can see how the movement travels, this one, travels across and back and slightly up, right? So I'll do a few with intent. Um, right? Okay, so what most people see is the bottom hand, like a punch. There's nothing special about a punch, right? You can just work your punches over and over again. What's important is the top hand, right, here. And so you see, it doesn't travel very far from the front. I'll do it from the other side. Um, it just travels a little bit, right? Watch the, the back and the waist. Like that, okay? This is pulling back. So. Hung is, I'm trying to get this sort of reaction, like that, right? And I'm just gonna do this as a demo, okay? So here, right, you see that? You see? This is just a demo, really, okay? Here, right, just a little, if I add it, more stuff into it, so you see how he comes up and forward. He has no choice in that matter because it's a small explosive movement. It happens too fast for him to be able to necessarily resist it. He would have to resist it before I did it, right? He can't resist it while I'm doing it. This is different than a, right? If I do a big movement and try to pull him, well, what happens then is my movement is much bigger, which means my reset is much bigger. So by the time I've got him moving where I want him, and I've reset to a position that I can now enter for a throw, he's probably reset to a position as well, where I've, no, I've lost my advantage, okay? So this hung can be used, right? Like for, uh, for this move we worked on today, G, right? So like, let's say I'm in a position here, I come up, right? I get that hung where his foot's at, and I can come in to catch the position, right? So you see I did that with a little bit of a step to the side. Now we also have other ways that we work on it. Like here, this is another one. We call this one tse hung to the side. Like that. And this would be used usually from an underhook position, same thing, to get him moving, okay? 
So that's what the big stick teaches. Now, just like the belt, you can also um, put in a lot of fluff if you want to for variation, right? I can take a whole lot of techniques, right, and and right, and do it right with the the belt or with the stick. But at that point, you're actually not really working hung anymore. It's just becoming a tool like that you're using. Um, like I'll give it to new, I'll sometimes I'll have uh, newer students hold the stick when they do some of their solo drills because it makes them move the hands together. And if you can move, and if you can move the hands together, that'll get you to move from the, the back and the torso more, right? Versus just moving separately. If they're moving to hand, then it starts to come from the back. So it's slightly different, right? That's no longer working home. It's just a training tool to give different feedback to the solo movements. But for hung, there's probably about four or five specific exercises that work that sort of off-balancing energy in slightly different planes, right? From this position, from this position, from this position, you know, just kind of playing around a little bit. So it's a, it's a really good practice. It takes a while, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a, you have to be relaxed, you have to be explosive, you have to just put a lot of time in it to get that sort of uh, explosion and, um, and, and, and know where you're putting your intent and know what the effect is that you're trying to create in somebody to come together. Otherwise, um, it just is a, it's, a, it's just a big stick, <laughs> right? Gotcha. If you don't have a big stick, you can use a pipe or something in a pinch. Gotcha. So. Do you have any uh, resources available where you can maybe do those exercises to develop the energies with the stick? I have, um, I have on YouTube, I think I have a video, one video about the big stick and some exercises you can check out. And um, um, if anybody's interested, um, I, ha I do also have like an online training uh, course that you can check out. There's a free version of it you can check out. There's no big stick. I don't think there's any big stick in it. But eventually, in the, within the online training, there's, um, there's going to be some big stick stuff. And probably in one of the next uh, seminars I do, it'll probably be more focused on, I might do one more focused on some of the equipment training. Um, you know, these are hard to find. These are even hard to find in China. But you can use a pipe. Pipe works. Uh, a wooden dowel works, you know. Um, you don't get this sort of roundness and awkward grip that, that is very specific to the big stick. And this is pretty hefty too. It's not a light piece of wood, you know. It's not like pine or something. It's, it's got some heft to it. But it's not, I wouldn't call it heavy, but it's got some, you know, it's a stocky piece. But it's a really good practice. The uh, big stick is, um, is, is uh, a lot of times the specialized equipment training is, is what really kind of ups your, your, your shui jiao practice at, once you've got the technique down, because a lot of times that specialized training is what you use for um, off-balancing, you know, creating opportunities for those throws. So, yeah. yeah, that's that's something that I absolutely appreciate about shui jiao is that the training methods, uh, practitioners uh, train like I would do fight. Yeah, there's. Uh, uh, it, unlike other code five systems, uh, which you may already be familiar, it's very clear with a lot of the single techniques you guys are training uh, using the supplementary uh, exercises and tools. It, it's it's very clear to tell how the application goes. Well, that has a lot to do. That has a lot to do with the history of Shui Jiao. You know, it's always been competitive, right? It's always been right. competitive. Um, it's always been. There's always been Shui Jiao competitions. It's always been used. So there's been a lot of time to um, weed out what was not useful, right? And, and to evolve and assimilate things that are useful, you know? So it's, that's why the system is quite advanced and sophisticated. I mean, there's really never been a, a period of time where, uh, at least in the, let's say like uh, the last, Three four hundred years or so. Uh, um, I'm, I'm definitely not a historian when it comes to Chinese martial arts, um, but uh, where it wasn't competed, you know, where it wasn't used to be applied, and so there was never a time where, you know, the intent and the application got separated from the body mechanics, and so they're always been in, in, in kind of harmony, and um, which is also why it, it it is so beneficial for other styles of martial arts because it kind of 
you know, might fill in some gaps. Or I, I get a lot of people when we go over stuff, when we, when we, we train something, they'll find a, they'll be like, oh, this is like this move in, in this set. Or this is like this exercise we do. Or this is similar to this one. I mean, across the board. I mean, like, I mean I've even had like, uh, like Okinawan karate people be like, oh, it's like this in the form. And it's like, yeah, okay, cool. Why not? <laughs> you know, like if, that's, if that allows you to connect with it, right, then great. You, can, you see how they overlap. If that changed the feeling a little bit how you do another exercise. I still always think, you know, if you, um, it's great to make those parallels, and I, and I do as well. But um, the best way to train shui jiao is to practice shui jiao, obviously. But um, it's nice to see those parallel, parallels and carry over into other, other, er, other areas as well. So, yeah. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for joining in.